Good morning to all of you. Hello, this one. Can you turn this up a little bit? Thank you. Welcome. It's Friday. We made it through another week. And we are blessed indeed. And today we're going to start off uh, looking back just one day. Because yesterday's lesson on shining that great shine, that great radiance within all of us was so beautiful and so important. And we're gonna go back and revisit that for just one moment uh, before we move into our lesson today. As we said yesterday, we are here to shine. We are not here to put a bushel basket over our light. We are here to build a fire on a hill so that all may see it, not in a way of drawing attention to ourselves, but in a way of drawing attention to the light and to the shine itself. And there is a great guru of, of this shine, of this particular experience. And I thought we would begin today by um, hearing a, a song that was written about this guru while looking at a picture of him. So I'm just going to invite you to sit back and enjoy. I'm going to pull up this picture now. There we go. Okay, so just take a deep breath. Let's begin to shine. Come back again. you to stay next time Cause sometimes the world ain't kind When people get lost like you and me I just made a friend A friend is someone you need Don't 
wake me up too soon I'm gonna take a ride across the moon You and me You and me Just you and me I'll be right here <laughs> okay. You know, yesterday after we talked about shining, it, that hit me afterwards. That beautiful song by Neil Diamond. So I thought I would share that as an introduction. All right. Now we're going to go to our lesson of the day. So let me pull that up on the screen. So, I heed my inner guidance and work for my success. This is like a, just a short song. We're going to sing it a few times. And once you get it, just come join me or just relax and listen. I heed my inner guidance and I work my success I allow your voice to speak to me and I accept nothing less than the wisdom that always enters when I hear the call to love your voice lifts me high above this world. Okay, see if you can join me. I heed my inner guidance and I This 
world So today's word is guidance I heed my inner guidance and work for my success My mind is full of ideas and plans and dreams and goals at times, it may be difficult to sort them out and formulate a cohesive plan that ensures my success. This is where my guidance comes in. To receive my inner knowing clearly, I quiet my mind to better tune in to the still small voice, my link to my divine nature. With every plan I create, I remind myself and I need not rely solely upon my knowledge and reason. I also can access my guidance, which I may discern as a persistent feeling or a nudge to do something. If my guidance is unclear or difficult to discern, I wait with patience until I can determine how to proceed. I allow my inspiration to speak to me as I continue on my path. And from Proverbs, the human mind plans the way, but the Lord directs the steps. Let's sing this one more time. I heed my inner guidance and I work for my success. I allow your voice to speak to me and I accept nothing less than the wisdom that always enters when I hear the call to love your voice lifts me talk a little bit about this today. We're blessed to have Reverend Johannes with us today. She'll be with us again on Sunday as well. And so I'm going to go first and then I'll, I'll bring in Johannes and then Vicki and Teddy. And we'll listen to the inner guidance as we go, because that's the key, isn't it? Right now in this moment, I am called, you are called, we are called to listen. And the way I think of it, do you remember when, when you were a teenager and you had your first crush or your first romance and back then you probably remember we all didn't have cell phones in fact for most of us there was probably one phone line in the whole house and you'd be feeling this devotion this all, all you wanted to do is sit and talk to your beloved and the phone and feel their presence and you may be on the phone for hours and you're not even saying anything. You're just sitting there with the phone pressed against your ear, feeling their breath, not even saying a word, but feeling their presence. And every once in a while, there'll be a little whisper and then there'll be a scream because your brother or your mother or your father is screaming to get off the phone <laughs> so someone else can use it. But that doesn't matter because all you can do is just feel the presence, feel the guidance. And to me, that's what guidance feels like. It's like knowing that I always have that line open. That line is always open to that inner guidance that we can call the Holy Spirit if we want. That is always there, always ready to share and to tell us even in small ways which direction to turn, what choice to make, if we would but listen. However, we have been so conditioned to believe 
that I know better and I can do this on my own. I don't need to listen to that still, small, quiet voice because the loud voice in my head drowns it out. And I always think that's going to be the right answer, but experience usually proves that that's not true. My experience shows that when I follow that loud voice, I always end up in a place that I don't want to be or in an experience that I didn't really want. But when I choose to listen and to be still and just to allow that quiet voice, like holding the phone against my ear and feeling the presence of the divine and then just listening for their breath. Now and then just a very small, quiet direction comes. And the more I choose to follow it, the louder that direction becomes. The more I choose to listen, hold on, we're gonna, I'm gonna mute you, Johannes, because I'm hearing an echo. The more I choose to listen and to follow it, the louder it gets. So that's gonna be our lesson today, choosing to listen to the guidance. And now, Johannes, I'm going to let you take it from there for a little bit. Good morning. Do you have the 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 the, the echo still or only still? when I talk? Ah, okay. Well, first of all, James, I I feel so grateful that we come together every morning to share our own way of experiencing the presence, the presence of God. We all know that all paths go to go. It takes you to go. So we shine when every time each one of us share their own understanding or their own path. It's, it's just beautiful. So that's the way we, we really shine. And about... Um, Today's uh, daily word is beautiful because it talks about quieting the mind. I quiet my mind. It's, I quiet my mind to quiet the chatter of the world. As they, I was writing some notes while you were reading it, and it says the, the wisdom that always enters when I hear the call to love and to do that, I go into silence to be able to connect with my divine nature. I quiet my mind to be aware of the presence of God. I usually, well, it's been like a 30 years thing that I have been doing. Every year, I go away for at least one week. And when I say at least, it's because it can take 21 days. I have not done more than 21 days in silence, but, or two weeks, usually one week. It's to be in silence, to quiet my mind. But today's daily word talks about a silence that we can access every day, any moment, even in your daily activities, to close our eyes and feel the presence of the divine all around us, to feel peace in our hearts, to quiet my mind, to tune into the still, small voice. And I have to tell you, my favorite activity in the whole world is, ex is doing exactly that, to quiet my mind, to be in silence and rest in God at any moment in the morning, <laughs> vital in the moment, in the morning. Because that, I mean, that's, that's my, my, my food, that's my, my life. And I always like to quote some people when I am talking about a 
theme or something. And I, I have something from Mahatma Gandhi, and this is, he says, in the attitude of silence, the soul finds the path in a clearer light. In the attitude of silence, the soul finds the path in a clearer light. And what is elusive and de deceptive resolves itself into crystal clearness. And then he says, our life is a long quest after truth. So that's what we are doing here every morning and just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm, thank you, dear one. You know, you brought something to my attention that I didn't realize until you were speaking. And, and that is how these daily word lessons can sometimes string together into a single experience. So if we go back uh, three days, we hear, I rest in the deep peace of God. And when I do that, my shining light brightens the world that was yesterday's. And then I begin to heed my inner guidance and work for my success. So it begins with choosing to rest, to fall back into the arms of the divine, rest in God, and then shine, feel the shine that is there that can only come from that deep rest and silence. And then finally, to know that I am hearing the guidance. It is only when I'm resting in God, holding still, that that guidance comes and directs my every move. So it's beautiful how this week, these lessons all intertwine and bring us together. And that being said, Victoria, I'm going to turn to you now. And I would love to hear what you have to share about this inner guidance. Is she here? <laughs> I thought she was there. I think she's at a pool party. <laughs> Uh, As a matter of fact. Good for her. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll turn to you then, Teddy. Okay. Well, I really have to laugh whenever we talk about guidance because the last guidance, well, not the last, but one of the guidance I got was don't listen to anybody here because they don't know enough to help you. <laughs> Just listen to us. <laughs> And it's true, it's like, you know, I mean, when your mind is open, you can get communication from anyone, anything, any place, any time. Um, and it feels different. That's what I had to learn, the difference in the feeling. Now, when I get guidance from the guides or Jesus, it's like somebody cracked my head open and they're dropping in information. It's entirely different than, um, you know, talking to a person here. Um, and it comes in all ways. I mean, I think the more you heed to the guidance, the more everything is willing to talk to you because finally they get someone who wants to listen. You know, most people down here don't really listen. They think they know what they're doing. They want to please other people. So they do what other people want them to do, rather than turning to within and looking for the, an answer that works. Now the Holy Spirit's answers work for everything. They shorten the they shorten the need for time because it's not a selfish answer. It's an answer that's going to work for everybody in the divine plan. And I think that's what we need to learn to live by. We need to learn to live by the guidance because it's all inclusive. It's not restrictive, it's not um, limited, and the experience of it is incredible. Just like Joaz was saying, when your mind opens up and you join with something beyond space and time, like Jesus or the Holy Spirit, there's a, an experience that comes with it that is not of this world. And it's the way we lose the fear of our reality because eventually, 
this being a temple place, we have to depart this world entirely. And it's not gained by death, because in truth, we're never born. So we, we have to learn to open our mind, to receive the guidance, and it's available to everybody. There was a point in time when I thought I should stop using the word Jesus when I talked to people about, you know, this, that, and especially on Facebook. And Jesus said to me, no, I want them to know that they can talk to me and I will answer back. So it's everybody is capable of getting guidance. You just have to stay attuned and be aware. And the more you use it, the more it's available. Eventually, you know, you, you understand the feeling and you understand that, you know, like in little things, you don't really need it. But in the bigger things where you need to make a decision and, you know, you feel it's going to affect you in a particular way, that's when you have to ask and you will receive. Ask and you shall receive. That's it. But the willingness to ask is everything. And the more you use it, the more you're going to receive. Willingness to ask is everything. Yes. That's it. You know, as you were speaking, Teddy, I, I realized that the ego is, well, it loves an echo chamber because all it really wants to listen to is itself. And therefore, it, it's like, uh, say, it's like the internet or it's like cable news or it's like social media. All it really does is it, it, it amplifies that which you already believe. If you're on Facebook, for example, it's not going to give you the other voice. It's going to only give you what you bring in, what you want to have echoing in that chamber. And that's why it, it's so uh, everything is so divided because we're only listening to ourselves and our own ideas. And I don't consider the possibility that there is a guidance outside of that echo chamber. So this process we're talking about, you, you mentioned, you know, how it's like you, your head opens up and the information from that divine source gets dropped in. That's all it really is, is open up the top of that echo chamber so that reality can enter in, not the voice that I necessarily want to hear, because what I want to hear is what I don't need to hear. What I want to hear on an egoic level is the, is the justification for separation. The idea that this is a real situation, a real drama, a real place. And the guidance is showing me, no, there's something beyond this that I want you to see. But you're not going to see it until you let, get, get outside that echo chamber, just letting your own thoughts just spin and spin and spin out of control. Can you speak a little bit about that, Teddy? Well, it's entirely true what you're saying. It is. The ego loves its own thinking. And it's limited because it's either this or that, yes or no. And it can never get out of that range. When you open your mind to guidance, you're in an entirely different range where anything is possible. But you're, but it's true. The ego, it's, it is like an echo chamber. That's a good... Because it only hears what it wants to hear. And it only hears what validates its thinking. That's right. That's That's James, all. can I say something? Sure, go right ahead. Well, I was just reading this morning the foreword um, in the Course in Miracles, and it's exactly what we are talking about. It says, this course is a beginning, not an end. Your friend goes with you. You are not alone. No one who calls on him can call in vain. Whatever troubles you, be certain that he has the answer and will gladly give it to you if you simply turn to him and ask it of him. He will not withhold all answers that you need for anything that seems to trouble you. He knows the way to solve all problems and resolve all doubt. His certainty is yours. You need but ask it of him and it will be given you. Well, that's perfect. 
The question then becomes, who is he or who is him that is being referred to here? And the voice. The Holy Spirit, the voice, the Christ, Jesus, whatever works, just listen. Just listen to that voice. And as Teddy was saying, call upon it in every situation. Because if you do, it will answer you in every situation. If you call upon Jesus, if you call upon the Christ, the, it, it, just call upon that, that which is outside the echo chamber of your own mind, that which is just bouncing around the thoughts that you already believe, rather than getting realizing that the thoughts that I already believe have shown me an insane world. And the only way to, to re, be released from that insane world is to open up and to allow the guidance to come in. So listen, this is going to be a time for deep listening. You know, I, 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 this whole thing makes me laugh, and I have to, I know I've said this before. When I first started to read the Course, and I found out that there were notes from Jesus that were excluded, my mind went, wow, every word from Jesus' mouth is important. What, I wonder what else he said. And the voice said to me, don't worry, all the notes will be made available to you. Well, two lawsuits later, I'm sitting in Australia, and this box shows up, and it's got every the hand, the hand, the, the transcribed every single level of notes from A Course in Miracles that there ever was, from the dictation taken down the dictation pad, on through the edition that they published, Bill's edit, it was all there, and all I can remember was when I got the boxes, the voice saying, "Don't worry." All the material will be made available to you. And that's it. And it's always like that. It is always like that. You just got to be willing to ask. And it happens. Yeah. Which but brings us to, to the... <laughs> which brings us to the final word that we're going to focus on today. And this is such an important word, so I really want to take this in. Trust. Trust the guidance. Trust what you hear. That's a good example, what Teddy just shared. He heard that. He didn't know what it meant or when that would happen, but he trusted it. And sometime later, there it was. So no matter what, listen deeply. Allow that inner voice to speak to you. Be quiet. Rest in God. Let your light shine. Listen to that still, quiet voice and trust it and follow it. It will never lead you astray. And that's, I think, the perfect place for us to end our week of joining, to surrender deeply, to listen deeply, and to trust what we hear. So thanks to all of you who have joined us.